nutrition. Eat your tryptophan foods, high-protein foods, meat, fish, eggs, dairy, whey, seeds if you're a vegetarian, nuts, beans, legumes, especially soy. These are all natural plant sources or natural sources of tryptophan. But I digress. Melatonin is really what it's about when it comes to, really what we're talking about when it comes to protecting the skin naturally without using topical or toxic, uh, toxic sun protection, sun protecting ingredients. But melatonin does tons more. You get the same benefits from melatonin, at least some melatonin's fat protecting benefits. Remember, think fat protection when you think melatonin. You get the same kind of fat protection, fat protection benefits from my all-time favorite vitamin, one of, I guess, and that's vitamin E. Vitamin E has many of the clinical and therapeutic effects that melatonin does. Very similar in terms of its effects. That's because vitamin E, like melatonin, is a fat protection vitamin. And if you're, we're talking skin here, remember this is all about the skin. And the skin is very receptive to fatty substances and fat deficiencies and problems with fatty, uh, fatty uh, lack of fatty vitamins. Vitamin E is very difficult to get from foods. So most people are going to be deficient in vitamin E because most people aren't supplementing. Vitamin E has a lot of the same fat protection clinical benefits for the skin that uh, that melatonin does. It's a skin anti-aging vitamin in the same way that uh, vitamin E protects oils and essential fatty acids and, and the outside part of cells, it's also going to protect the skin. Vitamin E is always going to be found in high-end or, or most essential fatty acid products, including the longevity, EFAs and EFA+. Plus. I use vitamin E in the lab when I'm making a skincare product. If you put oils in a skincare product, and I, I try to stay away from oils, but every once in a while I would have to use one if I was formulating for somebody else or filling a prescription, there's, uh, you have to put fat protection molecules, antioxidants, fat antioxidants in your skincare product. The most common one is something called BHT, butylated hydroxytoluene, BHT, toluene. BHT is not necessarily toxic. It may or may not be. There's, some folks don't think it is, but some folks do. What toluene certainly is. Anyway, BHT is found in bread. Anywhere where there's grains or grain oils, you'll see BHT. I didn't like working with BHT. So I use vitamin E. Vitamin E is just as good as BHT when it comes to protecting oils and fats. Look for vitamin E in your skincare product if you're using a standard cream or lotion. Vitamin E also plays a major role, like melatonin, in the brain and in the nervous system. Vitamin E is one of an Alzheimer's patient's best friends. In fact, all fats for Alzheimer's patients. Alzheimer's disease is tragic on so many levels. It's tragic because of the people who have to care for the Alzheimer's patient. It's tragic because you're actually seeing somebody, but they're not really there, especially when it's full-blown dementia. But it's ultimately the most tragic reason, the most tragic aspect of Alzheimer's disease is that it is so unnecessary, especially flare-ups or especially progressive. You know, if you get it because you didn't know what you were doing, that's one thing. But once you know you have it or you're on the way to getting it, you could take all kinds of protective measures to slow down the progression, to keep it from progressing. All kinds of them. And one of the most important is vitamin E. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll continue when we come back from our break and take your phone calls as well. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back right after this. Okay, we are back on the bright side. My friend Noelia sent me a uh, study here. I hadn't seen this. Melatonin attenuates sepsis-induced brain injury. The activation of uh, epigenetic systems. Sepsis is a big, big problem, and I suspect very, very underappreciated. Sepsis is dirty blood. Doctors will tell you if you have sepsis, it's life-threatening, and they're right, because they're referring to bacterial sepsis, which is a dirty blood condition caused by poisons from bacteria. But you can have, a, you can have subclinical sepsis. Dirty blood, in fact, most people do have subclinical sepsis, especially if they have a de degenerative health issue. That's what I was talking about before we went to break, about Alzheimer's disease. If you have Alzheimer's or you know somebody who has Alzheimer's, please understand, it can be, the progression can be halted. If there's damage, you may not have, you know, if you're elderly, you, you may not have time to repair the damage, but certainly you can halt the damage. You can certainly halt the progression. 
by, number one, keeping your sugar intake down. Anybody who's dealing with dementia or any psychotic issues, like any kind of brain health issues, psychoses, kinds of things, dementias, Alzheimer's disease is now known as type 3 diabetes. I've been telling you this for years. Alzheimer's disease is a blood sugar issue. It's part of something called metabolic syndrome. We're going to talk about that next week because there's nutrients that you can take to stop metabolic syndrome. Now, technically, they're not going to tell you that it's part of metabolic syndrome, but it is. Metabolic syndrome is all the different ways sugar messes us up, and one of the major ways it does is in our brain. And if you have Alzheimer's disease, you, you got diabetes, type 3 diabetes, they call it, but it's a blood sugar problem. So that's the first thing you do. Next thing you do is liquid nutrients, lots of them, especially the B vitamins. We often told the story about Ted Anderson and his dad. He was on, he had, he had Alzheimer's, and this is when Ted first started hearing about Ted Anderson from GCN, own, owns the network. He, when I uh, first met him, we were talking about his dad. His dad had uh, Alzheimer's disease, and Ted didn't know anything about nutrition. Talked, told him about the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, the B vitamins. Well, surprise, surprise, his dad started to improve when he got on the B vitamins, when he got on the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. I've seen this so many times. So Alzheimer's disease, think vitamin E. I'm sorry, think, uh, think uh, B-complex. Think sugar retention and think vitamin E. Vitamin E is one of the most important vitamins when it comes to all brain health issues. Vitamin E can be thought of, at least varieties or forms of it, as a type of learning, uh, learning aid, nootropic agent, they call it. Vitamin E is just a stupendously valuable vitamin, stupendously, but very unusual vitamin. As I said earlier, it's not found in a lot of foods, vitamin E. And vitamin E also is not really utilized by chemistry in the body. It's more like a protector. It is a protector. It's not more like a protector. It protects things. It's not utilized for chemistry the way the B vitamins are. It's not a cofactor. It's a protecting element. It's an antioxidant. It protects fats like melatonin. We'll talk a lot about vitamin E. Uh, and we'll talk about topical vitamin E, one of the best ways to protect yourself from the sun, topical vitamin E as well as, as, well as taking vitamin E internally. We'll do that next week as we continue talking skin health on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to our first phone call of the day. Uh, Andre, I think we talked to Andre yesterday. What's up, Andre? You had, you had the uh, hey. thyroid issue, right? Yeah, but you know what? It's funny. Yesterday I started talking to you. I'm at home and I checked on my uh, my record on my, on my doctor, and I was diagnosed uh, in 2012 with the low thyroid and then another doctor uh, was uh, writing it down that it was high thyroid. So <laughs> come to well, it could now. go either way. Sometimes it's low, sometimes it's high. That's so much for medical diagnoses. There. Here's the here's yeah. the thing. The thyroid is very, 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 very responsive to what's happening in the body. It goes up and down based on what's happening in the body. And when I say the body, I mean the blood. So, like all things, like all issues, it's a blood issue. Nothing gets into the thyroid. Nothing affects the thyroid unless it's in the blood. Does that make sense? Now, it's true yeah. about a lot of things, but because the thyroid is designed to be responsive, it's a regulatory system, it's regulating things based on the environment, it's super sensitive to what's in the blood. So you've got a blood problem. So you've got to ask yourself, okay, how do things get in my blood? Well, you're not sticking them in your veins, you're, so you're eating it. All right? It's a yep. food issue. You want to link the foods to changes in thyroid function. Now, you also have to work on digestive health for a lot of reasons. Number one, if your digestive system is not working, well, first of all, things are going to leak into the blood. That's one reason why you want to work on the digestive system, to keep things from leaking into the blood. So you've got to patch up the gut. I'll tell you a few things to do here in a second. But the second reason why you want to work on the gut is because you're not going to absorb nutrients. If your digestive lining and the, the cells of the digestive system are messed up. So that's the second reason to work on the gut. And the third reason to work on the gut when you have a thyroid problem is because probiotics, good bacteria, are involved in turning thyroid hormone on. The gut regulates the thyroid, and the thyroid then regulates the gut. So there's all these reasons why you want to... When I say the gut, I mean the intestine. 
what you want, there's all of these reasons for when you have a thyroid problem. Everybody listening, okay? Because the hypothyroidism is a major, major health issue. Major, major, major. Maybe the most important of all health issues. Broda Barnes wrote a book called The Hidden Cause of All Illness. And I think that's the name of it. I always forget the name. But his name is Broda Barnes. And he hypothesized that everything, all illness was related to, uh, to the thyroid. And he's right. It is. It's the jumping off point. But the thyroid itself is dependent on the digestive tract. Okay, so work on the digestive system first. Hashimoto's and Graves' disease are, are the two major causes of uh, hyper and hypothyroidism. Hypo and hyperthyroidism are, are autoimmune diseases, which also is a food problem. So here's what you do for thyroid. All right. If you and by the way, if, just, yeah? if I can say something real quick, I'm also now having a Graves' disease. You also what? Oh, because I see them have the Graves' disease. Yes, I know. I told you that yesterday. And you said, no, you yeah. didn't. Graves, yeah. Graves' disease, don't worry about it. I'm, don't worry about the names. Your diagnosis doesn't matter. Okay? The name doesn't matter as far as reversing this thing goes. So here's the deal. Graves' disease, by the way, is just an autoimmune disease of the thyroid, and it causes the thyroid okay. to go crazy. Okay? So here's what you do. Patch up the gut with soothing mucilaginous gummy substances. That's the first move. And that means the fucoid Z, algae products, seaweed, cartilage, anything gummy, noni, aloe, anything that kind of has a gummy kind of mucilaginous quality to it. Glucosamine can help you there too, as well as gelatin. Glucogel caps have both. That's number one. Okay. Number two, get on the nightly essence and use a lot of them. And in conjunction with the nightly essence, you want to be eating fermented food. As much as, whatever you can find, especially veggies. And in conjunction with that, you want to be drinking veggie juices. All of this is in the interest of getting the fiber and the probiotics and the nitrates to help support the health of the gut, the, the microbiome specifically, gut bacteria. You might want to get a book called The Art of Fermentation, which I've talked about a lot on this program. Yeah. That's a real, real cool book. Just get any books on fermentation. There's another one called Wild Fermentation. Those are two good books on fermentation. Very easy to make your own sauerkraut and uh, miso and tempeh and kimchi, etc. All right. The next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make sure you're getting lots of liquid nutrients, especially the electrical nutrients, especially the B vitamins, and that means you're beyond tangy tangerine. In fact, I'd be doing the whole healthy start pack if I were you. That way you'll get your essential fatty acids, which are also important for the thyroid. Okay? And then, last but most certainly not least, make sure you're keeping your sugar intake down. Uh, the thyroid will go nuts, especially if you have Graves' disease. If you get a big old burst of sugar, uh, nothing will make the thyroid go more uh, crazier than uh, uh, sugar, especially if you do drinking soda pop or something that gets the sugar into the system real quick. Uh, also, food allergens. Hang tight. I'll finish up when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. Okie dokie. We are talking to uh, Andre, I believe. I lost my, lost my little list here. Andre in California. Is that Andre? Do we have Andre? Yes. Yeah. Hey, buddy. Uh, all right. So, yeah, uh, everything we were just talking about, before we went to break, I want to tell you about uh, eliminating problem foods. Food allergens can cause a, a spark in, in thyroid activity. So keeping food allergens out, do a food diary, eliminate problem foods, focus on the digestive tract, blood sugar, and when you really go into it, well, you want to practice deep breathing all the time, but when your thyroid is really starting to freak out when you're getting the hot flashes and your blood pressure is going up and all, uh, all that other stuff, you want to uh, calm the body down with deep breathing, slow, deep breathing, in through the nose, out through the, through the nose, 15 seconds in, 15 seconds out, uh, and then maybe two or three minutes of that. Okay? What do you have to do? What do you have to uh, breathe out through your nose? Can you just breathe out through your mouth? Well, hang on. Let me just say, I forgot one thing. Don't forget about the iodine, too. Iodine's not curative for the thyroid, but if you're hyperthyroid, you're going to be burning through iodine. So you probably you may run into iodine deficiency. So make sure you're doing some iodine also, uh, either Lugol solution or iodorol uh, or uh, the nascent iodine. Uh, breathing out through the nose is uh, very interesting because there's resistance in the nose that, there's, that is not in the uh, mouth, and w that resistance activates the parasympathetic nervous system system, the relaxation nervous system. So you want to feel that resistance as you're breathing out. You can, you can actually yeah, yeah. do that's it. What, that, that's why I feel it. That's why I didn't really want to do it. I was actually deep breathing, but exhaling through the mouth. No, you want to activate the nerves in the nose, the parasympathetic, the relaxation nerves in the nose, and resistance does that. 
Okay. Should I avoid fruit? Should I avoid fruit because of the sugar? Uh, fruit, you got to be careful with. Definitely avoid fruit juice. But fruits, you know, you have to be careful with it. Smaller fruits, berries and kinds of things, those, those are probably good for you. But don't go crazy with them. Okay. Okay. I appreciate that. Thank you, buddy. Thank you very much. I appreciate Take care, that. Andre. Thank God you. bless, man. Good luck. Right. Okay. Uh, Rob in Nevada has been holding on forever here. What's up, Rob? How you doing, man? Good, good, Ben. Hey, love you. Love your show. Thanks Thank for you. all you do. Thank you. Hey, let's just um, get into this real quick. Uh, yeah. Mid-40s. Um, yeah. How do we build our testosterone?